Are you struggling with lager beer maturation time? Well, there's a lot of opinion, and it seems like very little fact. So what's really the correct lager maturation time? Well, I asked that question to two world-renowned experts, and frankly, I was shocked with their answer, especially Jan's comment at the end of the clip. Now, this was part of a longer event discussing best practices and demystifying lagering as a whole. It was really full of great tips, and I'll put the link right up here in the cards and in the description too, so make sure you watch the entire full-length video. Also consider giving this video a like. I think we should discuss that as a length, uh, and a lot of people, and that's also yeast depending, dependent if you need to mature or if you do not need to mature. That depends on the yeast you have, but it also depends on what do you want to accomplish? Uh, if we talk about freshness, I think uh, I would actually try to do it as fast as possible, get it out to the customer as fast as possible. So uh, your consumers actually can drink a very fresh beer, which is really what you want as a brewer. You want them to taste what you have made. Do not wait for it to mature for hundred years because it will change in the bottle anyway. So get it out there, get rid of the diacetyl, and then that's key, get rid of that diacetyl. Maybe it will come in the future, you'll never know. Uh, you have new product development coming up all the time uh, and, and some brewers actually look for diacetyl. It all depends, but I would say a decent lager should not have a lot or any diacetyl. There, there you really have to look at. You can say get your beer in fermented, uh, think about your diacetyl VDK peak, uh, get that reduced. Think about what you're doing. If you do dry hop beer, think about, uh, you can say and that it is an extra fermentation going on. You will have another DA peak if you have a lot of dry hop beer. So think about all these things before you actually put it into the bottle can or cake. Charlie, last word. I think Richard Urquhart is a good discussion point for, for several of these things that uh, Jens has just mentioned. First is the acetyl. If you go to the Czech Republic and you taste a, a, a Czech Pilsner, you probably will be exposed to some diacetyl and they want it. So again, it's another example of what's right for some people is, is not right for others. I used to know somebody who was responsible for brewing Pilsner Urquell and, and I've got the utmost respect for a wonderful company, but I, I, I personally am not a fan of, of diacetyl in any product. On the beer that I've got here in front of me, and I know Jens is going to lead the discussion on that, I'm not getting the diacetyl, so it's disappeared. So it's no longer true to type. It's no longer true to type. Uh, in sec and the second point is, in terms of maturation, again, back to the Carling Black Label story, we, our philosophy, as, as touched upon this already, is uh, during fermentation, uh, we allowed the temperature to arise midway through the fermentation and speed up the rate of mopping up the diacetyl. Once the diacetyl had come down below the target level, the precursors, you have to make sure you measure the diacetyl and the pentane diam precursors. Once that had happened, then we got the yeast off the beer, chilled it down to minus one Celsius for three days, and then packaged it and got it out to the customer. The argument being, the quicker you got the keg back to the brewery, you could fill it up again and get it out again. And I, I don't like yeast in contact with beer for a long time. It, it releases proteidic enzymes and they screw up the foam. So I, I, we did a study, one of the last things I did before I left UC Davis, we applied metabolomics to look at changes taking place in materials in the beer uh, on prolonged storage. And we couldn't find any mm. significant changes. People talk about, oh, you're releasing amino acids and nucleotides and so on. We, we didn't look at every case, but we couldn't find any evidence for, for changes taking place. What do you do? Do you want a clear beer or do you want a, a hazy beer and so forth? You, we can take that discussion as well at a certain time, but I think that depending on you can say one is your freshness if you think about it, making your beer and, and stay flavor stable and fresh for longer then i would really think about how you actually how you actually uh, mature your beer and how long for how long but also what do you do afterwards do you want to filter it should it be hazy or not and and of course if you want a very low Turbidity. Then you need some of these proteins and polyphenols and all these uh, substances in beer to actually uh, precipitate. So you need these cold temperatures to get rid of most of it so it doesn't suddenly end up in your beer, in your final beer. 
Uh, so think about that. That's uh, that's very important. And of course, I've seen that some say I will just filter at six degrees. That's also fine. But then you have a hazy beer at a certain stage, maybe before you think about it. So yeah, if you, Michaela Meadle and I showed you, and other people have confirmed this, obviously, that it's all about the temperature you go to. So it's better to go to a very low temperature without freezing the beer. As low a temperature as possible is better than a longer time at a higher temperature. So minus two is, is better than minus one, which is a minus two for a day is far better than plus two for two months when it comes exactly. to physical stability. Now, this was just one clip from the entire replay. And I've posted the replay link right up here on the screen and in the description. So don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what your top takeaway was. And a like would also be appreciated too.